Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. Those of you who have followed my channel for a long time, and really since I started making videos, impacts, meteors, comets, what have you, they have always been a topic of mine. Seven years ago, I made a video talking about maybe an impact on the North American ice cap 12,000, 13,000 years ago, and just what has all transpired with Randall Carlson's work that still is something that I have been looking into, but I also like to say I get a lot of comments. You know, you should check out the Thunderbolts project and the Electric Universe theory and all that. Well, I have been listening to them or watching their videos ever since I joined YouTube. As far as this time period and an impact or a solar event, well, I think there was a lot of things happening. and There could have been multiple reasons for this catastrophic time period. Now, I've been looking into the events that happened 12,800 years ago and 11,600 years ago pretty closely for really as long as I've been making videos which is about seven years now but when I was looking into this subject I stumbled across a paper from the University of Minnesota based on a place that I have been to and I just thought it was fascinating and it really fits into my previous videos on impacts on earth and just a catastrophic history to this planet that we are just recognizing the full scope of today but let's just read that paper and here is that paper i will leave some links below but it says minnesota's evidence of an ancient meteorite impact what you are looking at is the fireplace from gunflint lodge a place i have been to so this really kind of brought this home for me and i really found this fascinating it says this fireplace at historic gunflint lodge in northeastern minnesota was constructed of some very unusual rocks their origin has puzzled visiting field geologists for decades new evidence indicates that the rocks derive from one of the world's oldest and largest meteorite impact events imagine central north america nearly two billion years ago as a meteorite 10 miles in diameter strikes the earth near what is now Sudbury, Ontario. The force of the collision vaporizes the meteorite and much of the ground near the impact site, forming a crater more than 150 miles wide. Shock waves race from the impact, deforming the crust around the crater's edge and causing earthquakes that shatter the ground hundreds of miles away. Within seconds, a cloud of ash, rock fragments, gas, and droplets of molten rock, known collectively as ejecta, rise through the atmosphere and begins to spread across the globe. In this turbulent cloud of ejecta, some of the ash and vapor coalesces, much like hailstones form during a thunderstorm to create small spheres called excretionary lapilli. The lapilli and other ejecta are propelled from the impact site at supersonic speeds. In the shallow ocean that covered much of the region, the impact generates huge tidal waves that cross the ocean surface, mixing together rock fragments and ejecta. Over time, this material is buried by younger sediments, cemented together, and fused by molten rock to form a solid layer. In 2007, a layer of rock was discovered in Minnesota that is thought to have formed during the Sudbury meteorite impact event. The layer is exposed near Gunflint Lake, nearly 500 miles west of the impact site at Sudbury. It is sandwiched between the Gunflint Iron Formation below and a slate of the Robe Formation above. Both of these formations were deposited as muddy oceanic sediments. Nearly a billion years later, these rocks were intruded by a magma event, the Logan Intrusion, as part of a major continental rifting event. Most of the impact layer consists of breccia, a mixture of fragments broken from the underlying iron formation and cemented together, and that is shown below. These fragments represent pieces of the seafloor that were ripped loose by impact-related earthquakes and carried down a submarine slope. Only the upper part of the layer at Gunflint Lake contains true ejecta, the most obvious of which are excretionary lapilli. Notice in figure 5 that the lapilli contain concentric rings that are formed by repeated layering of ash and melt droplets onto hailstone-like projectiles. In some of the locations near Gunflint Lake, the lapilli are intermixed with large iron formation fragments, suggesting that the material was reworked by tsunamis. The impact layer extends continuously from Thunder Bay, Ontario, southward into parts of Michigan and westward into Minnesota. Although it's a thin layer, only about 25 feet thick in Minnesota, it's a very 
important and remarkable one. Its importance lies in the record of global catastrophe that occurred in a moment of the planet's long geological history, and it's remarkable that such a thin layer has survived weathering and erosion for nearly two billion years. Of the 174 scientifically verified impact structures on Earth, only one is larger and few are older than the Sudbury impact. For comparison, the Chicxulub impact on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico is much younger, 65 million years old, and its crater size is smaller. Yet that Chicxulub event caused worldwide extinction of many species, including the dinosaurs. Clearly, the larger Sudbury impact would have had global ramifications. Table 1 shows the effects that might be expected near Gunflint Lake based on experimental evidence and observations from smaller impacts on Earth and other planets. It says calculated arrival times and effects at Gunflint Lake 480 miles away or 768 kilometers away from the actual impact site. So Gunflint Lake almost 500 miles away. In 13 seconds you'd have a fireball third degree burns and trees ignite in two to three minutes earthquake Richter scale 10.2 at Sudbury buildings collapse at Gunflint Lake in five to ten minutes airborne ejector arrives a layer one to three meters thick with fragments bigger than a centimeter in size in 40 minutes the air blast 500 miles away maximum speed 1400 miles an hour in one to two hours the tsunami the modern analog well we have nothing to compare in modern times to something this devastating that would have happened, and we can only guess. The internal organization of units within the impact layer at Gunflint Lake is consistent with the sequence of events outlined on the table. Seismic shakings from the earthquakes deformed and fragmented the underlying iron formation and caused submarine debris flows that redistributed the fragments into thick breccia unit. This was followed by a deposition of airborne ejecta that rained down on the ocean surface and settled on the seafloor, forming the lapilli unit. Finally, localizing reworking of the ejecta and breccia units by tsunamis produced the uppermost unit of mixed fragments and lapilli. Now here is where it gets pretty mind-blowing. It says, given the preceding context for interpretation, it is an interesting footnote that the entire layer of breccia and ejecta very likely represents the catastrophic events of a single day caught during the 48 million years that separate the deposition of gunflint iron formation below from the row formation above. And on this diagram we have maybe 11, 12 meters, maybe 35 feet plus of a layer that was found in 2007 and seven meters of that represents a single catastrophic day in a layering of 48 million years of deposit. 500 miles away almost from the impact event. Whoa. Despite the fact that large meteorite impacts are exceedingly rare and unlikely in our lifetime, recent geological research demonstrate that the impact process is fundamental to the formation of terrestrial planets. The ongoing study of these ancient deposits in the Lake Superior region will enhance our understanding of the environmental consequences of impact during the oldest time periods in Earth's history, and maybe even a time period, say, 12,000 years ago. Well, I'm working on that. This is figure eight, electron microprobe image of accretionary lapilli. I just found this paper to be very fascinating and impacts something I've been looking into for a long time. A 25 foot thick layer of deposit in about a 35 foot layer going over 48 million years created in one day. Jesus. But 500 miles away from maybe the second greatest impact ever in Earth's history, we have some geological evidence of just how catastrophic these events can be. But I have some pretty good memories of this region. But I uh, will certainly be thinking of other events besides walleye fishing when I think about this part of the world. Hope you thought this was cool and you all have a very nice day.